What is up everyone? JD here. I hope you're all doing well today. Today I'm excited to bring you another blade battle. We're going to be doing a blade battle between the Medford Slim Midi and Sat2 Dave's Mac 2 for McNeese Knives. Let's go ahead and run through the specs really quick and then we'll jump into the battle. We're going to talk through the knives and come up with a decision together about which one we would pick for ourselves. First, let's run through the McNeese. It has a three and a half inch Magna Cut steel blade, 4.25 inch titanium handles, 7.75 inch overall in length, and coming in at a very respectable 4.1 ounces. The Medford Slim Midi has a 3.25 inch S35VN blade, 4.38 inch titanium handles, Overall length coming in at 7.9 inches and coming in at 4.3 ounces. So right out the gate, weight, go into the McNeese if you like it lighter. Go into the Slim Midi if you like it just a skosh heavier. Very, very close in weight though on these two. Next thing we're going to talk about, and I know that we do have the jig pattern going on, which is a little bit um, nicer for the ergos or for the grip, I guess just to say on the McNeese, but we'll pretend this is the base model variant with the smooth scales. Same here, you can get only smooth scales, but you have more colorways that you can get on the Slim Midi. So let's go ahead and start from the base of the knife and work our way up. You have a more thinner presence on the Slim Midi. You do have a little bit more handle length at 4.38 inches, so you do have a little bit of room to move around. You also have a full choil up here that you can choke up on the knife comfortably. I just come up beside the edge of the blade. I would imagine you're using this for push cuts because you wouldn't want anything that's gonna cause your hand to slide forward because you're gonna come right up to the edge of that knife. Now, you don't have a knockdown to get to the relief cut or to the lock bar to disengage it so it is a tight fit for someone with large hands like myself it is really hard to get in there now if you're doing it like mefford himself and it does give you that little bit of a cut out there to put the end tip of the index finger in it is much easier to actuate that this way than it is if you like to come in with the thumb with the thumb it's a really tight fit because i have fat thumbs <laughs> all right let's talk about the McNeese, the McNeese is a much more chunkier knife, more rounded, but it is a shorter handle. Although for me, I still have just enough room on the back of the knife to be able to get my hand on there. The one thing that I like about both of these is they do have a taller handle. So it does come further up into the palm when you're gripping it. So it feels very, very comfortable. As far as access to the lock bar, very easy to access it either way, regardless of which way you prefer to disengage the knife. Works really, really well. It has a relief cut. It has chamfering on both sides of the scale, so you can come in from the side and you can let that thing drop down and hammer on your thumbnail all day long. Now, let's go ahead and get into the pivot and talk about action. If you're not familiar with Medfords, they are very tight in the pivot. You have to break them in or you have to know what tool to get in order to relieve some of the tension in the pivot. It is very much more of a shake shut type knife, very smooth action. It's smooth, no bearing bump or anything like that going on in the pivot. It is very, very smooth, but it has a stronger detent tune on it. Neither one of these knives are going to come flying out when you try to do that. Um, you do have the thumb cut out for the reverse flick and the thumb flick. I do give that a little bit of an advantage as well because it's not gonna get in the way of the cutting path. These are actually just stop pins. They are not thumb studs. It's meant to stop the knife when you close it and open it. So a very good design because that's gonna keep side to side play down to a minimal. When you talk about the McNeese, this is a guillotine fall shut action. It does have very nice, comfortable thumb studs for deployment, for thumb slug, uh, thumb slug, for thumb flick, and for the reverse flick. I don't know if I tried to mesh thumb stud. I don't know what I was getting ready to say there, but the action on it is really, really nice. Now, with all knives that have thumb studs, it does block the blade path. 
and they have to prioritize where they're putting that. I feel like this is as back as far on the knife as he can go. Can't go any further, but again, those do impede the blade path. I don't know if he could do anything to put like a little thumb hole cut out to where you could get into it. He'd have to put it right up to the edge and I don't know if that would look good for his design. Be interesting to see though. So that's a disadvantage for the thumb studs in the way of the blade path. Action on it's very, very smooth. So depending on what you want, you get like a hydraulic smooth action on the slim midi. Feels really good deploying, feels really good closing. It is pretty smooth. You do have to break it in. I would imagine the McNeese came and it probably got better and broke in, but it probably came almost guillotine from McNeese directly. Now, as far as blade shapes, it's a higher drop point, a very flat edge, very easy to control through your push cuts, a little bit more work to get through your utility cuts. You can get the slim midi in a drop point or a reverse tanto. Uh, reverse tanto a regular tanto which has the two edges so you can use this for your utility cuts um, to get up to the tip here it's going to be even worse than the drop point on the McNeese but the drop point on the actual midi does come down nice and low so it does work really well for the utility cuts as far as handling these two knives I would have to give that a tie they give you two different experiences. This one feels more chunky because of the way that it's chamfered around the edges. It feels like a thicker knife. This feels a little bit more slender, still nice and tall, comes way up into the palm, which I do like, and it gives you a little bit more room to maneuver and move around on there. As far as the finishing touches, I'd probably give that to the Medford just because the hardware gets a little bit of love. They do a little bit of the anodizing on everything on the knife, and I think that comes out really nice. Don't quite get that just yet from McNeese, but I can imagine as he continues to evolve his product, you'll start to see that type of stuff because it didn't take long for him to give you something with the scales, which you do get something from the scales from Medford, but it's usually anodizing or patterns or coating. You don't see too much pattern wise as far as milling patterns from Medford. I thought these two were very interesting to compare because they're vo both premium, what I would refer to as mid-tech, a lot of work done by hand on machines in a semi kind of production environment, not to Spyderco level or Benchmade level, but they are producing knives at a high rate, but there's a lot of hand work involved with it on a machine. So very comparable manufacturers and offerings and i think that you get a very different you know product from these two being that they're more of a thicker blade stock you're getting a more hard use mindset out of these two manufacturers um, but you're getting really really good build quality guillotine hydraulic you're getting really good action awesome ergos let me know down in the comment what knife would you pick and you can say that this one's the drop point because i know the tanto is very hit or miss um i picked this up on a trade for my 187 and i really do like this i think that would probably be the only thing that i would like to change is actually to get the drop point variant of it as opposed to the tanto but really well done and it's a it's a fairly thin hollow grind i'm really surprised i haven't had a chance to touch it up when I got it, I, I can tell he definitely had used it. It has more of a working edge. You can see it's hanging up a little bit there. So I do need to either probably hit the ceramic rod or just go ahead and give it a strop. Not quite sure what I'm hitting right there, but you can definitely tell it is catching somewhere in the middle there so really good knives though i thought this would be an interesting take and i thought i'd take advantage of the fact that i actually have uh sat to dave here on youtube and on instagram i do have dave's Mac mac2 from mcneese i really wanted the opportunity to do a little bit of a blade battle in the end it would be too tough of a choice for me i would want to keep both or i would want to get both but I am curious to see what you all will say in the comments. Which one are you picking for this blade battle? I would like to get this one in the S90V versus the S35VN. I do prefer the Magna Cut. Very easy to maintain, but it also has the qualities of edge retention and toughness. 
so it's a fantastic steel i'd even like to get this in a magna cut because i think he's dabbling a little bit in some magna cut on some of his knives so i would really love to be able to i love the um terminator look but i would love to have gotten that either an s90v for the edge retention and maintenance or i would have loved to gotten it in, in the magna cut I, I love this magna cut i think it's really well done but again let me know what you think down in the comments and who you would pick as the winner i thought this would be more so nicer to do it as kind of a rundown comparison comparing the two against each other rather than a true battle and trying to say one's better than the other i think they both have great qualities and great things about them so they're both to me fantastic edcs if you enjoyed today's video do me a favor leave a like consider subscribing if you're not already subscribed i don't know what you're doing you need to hit that notification bell so you get alerts whenever this content's coming at you <laughs> i hope you enjoyed the video and if you want, give me a follow over on Instagram. I appreciate all the love and support from everyone out there that tunes in regularly and that drops comments. Really just awesome. I'm just blown away by all the support. Thanks to each and every one of you. Thanks again today for loaning me the Mac 2. I enjoyed being able to carry your knife for a little while and hang out with it, get a little bit of content out of it. I'll be sending this back your way, brother. Thanks again. Hope all of you have a fantastic week. Until next time, peace.